Composing in the hybrid metaverse. Ladies and gentlemen, and those who identify otherwise, thank you for your presence at this presentation on composing in the hybrid metaverse. While I do not necessarily advocate the methods and apps I present today, I do enjoy sharing them with you and hope that you will enjoy the experience. Intro, composing in the hybrid metaverse. Our objectives today are to see examples of composing and cross-dimensional thinking and experiencing new ways to express ideas. When I think of composition, I think of arranging in a pleasing manner elements perceivable by our senses. Those elements include ideas, sounds, colors, flavors, odors, and texture. When I think of metaverse, I think of an evolving ecosystem of physically and digitally connected apps. And in particular, I think of apps allowing instant online two-way co-creative collaboration. In this presentation, I will share my experience composing online in Twitch over the last three years and conclude with inviting you to participate in some group exercises where we collaboratively compose together. So we will tell it as a story and recreate it as a shared exercise. Patterns give inspiration. So a long time ago, I was writing poetry in the form of six line sestets, and each line had an alternating pattern corresponding to the 64 I Ching hexagrams, with some lines representing dynamic yang and some magnetic yin. I went through two cycles of these and eventually had a 128 poem collection, some very good, I felt, and some okay, but all fitting the pattern of six lines with each line having a consistent length and meter. This slide shows the pattern confining, which has a shorter length in the first, fourth, and sixth position. Correspondingly in my poem, if you were to count syllables, my short lines have eight and my long lines have nine. So then I thought, how might I put these to music? I improvised a handful of themes that fit the words and meter and enjoyed them very much. And again, some I felt were good and some okay. For example, for the poem shown on the slide, here are the last two lines, long and short, expressed musically. I'm going to play that again and ask you, what does this sound make you think of? Not hearing sound. Okay, if you're not hearing sound, you need to have your sound enabled. There is a placard at the bottom left display that shows what your loudspeaker at the top should look like. Make sure sounds are checked, not muted, as well as voice. Okay, anybody that did hear it, I want to play it one more time and we will move on. I hear it, John says. So John, what does it, dreaming, says Buffy. Thank you. Very good. So each time I play a sound, I will have a prompt for you guys. Wistful, John says. DD says, heard it. <laughs> yes, the first time it loads, it will take a few seconds. One last time, just so you all 
know what it's going to be like going forward. All right. Okay. Uh, Marley, I don't know how to help you right now. I'm sorry that you can't hear it. Let me ask for a transcriber. If somebody is somebody who hears it, could you please type what it sounds like or Buffy will help you. There you go. So in this way, through sestets and music, I returned to something I had done in earlier days, but ceased, namely attempting to compose music. I decided to use custom scales pattern on six because the poems were six lines long. And I ended up using pentatonic scales of five notes each because, well, the best explanation I can come up with in hindsight is that six lines have five spaces separating them. And I wanted the end line to return to the first line musically. At least that's what I was trying for back then. Along the way, I ended up using a spreadsheet to lay out possible five note scales, because after all, there are 12 tones possible. Its classes give alphabets. This slide shows the 12 tones, which sound like this, and I'm going to play this several times, and the prompt is, what direction are these sounds? John says up. What direction Pirates says up? Thank you. Anybody else? Up. Uh, the ups have it. Thank you. And another up. I discovered that notes are pitch classes because our brains perceive notes as the same if doubled or halved in frequency. So a low C on a tuba sounds like a high C on a flute, and so on. Here, let me digress. All the white notes on the piano make what is called a major scale, and if you use three black notes instead of three white notes, you get what is called a minor scale, and these scales are related to each other because they all start on the same note C. More on that later. Music channels give inspiration. By this time, out of curiosity, I began looking for YouTube channels related to music, and I found many of them. Some of my favorites are 12 Tone and Music Theory for Guitar. This slide shows their channel thumbnails. Notations give perspectives. I found that traditional notation for chords and music theory started simple and became, I felt, confusing. So I began to make my own simplified and extended interpretation. This slide shows C3-4 and C4-3 chords, which are traditionally called C minor and C major. But there are a lot of other possible chords, 120 in all. And believe me, I have enumerated and used them all. 12 tone, the channel, also introduced the idea of one of the notes in a traditional scale not having a traditional function. So 12 tone made up a suggested name. They called it ambivalent. So I added ambivalent to my extended vocabulary. Perspectives give options. By this time, I had run across more YouTube music videos and was hearing about something called negative harmony, which caught my interest. In looking, I discovered music theory for guitar 
who gave a simple, elegant explanation and demonstration of negative harmony, which is that all minor scales are reflections of major scales and vice versa. If you draw the major scale on the upper arc of a circle and the minor scale on a lower arc, it looks like positive on the top and negative on the bottom. And that's why it's called negative harmony. This slide shows the reflected minor and major scales. And here is what they sound like. And I'm gonna play this several times and there are the prompts. If you hear a difference, type diff. If they're the same, type same. If you're not sure, not sure. Same, thank you, Pirates. Not sure, John, thank you. Same, says Dee Dee. Right, one more time. If, says Fran, a little lift at the end, says Buffy. You guys are getting good. One more time, then we'll move on. Good, good job, guys. Diff, says Beth. Hybridizing gives options. Thank you. So I had everything I needed. I was going to make five note scales and I was going to make them with a matching major and minor version each and they were going to be perfect reflections of each other. Using my trusty spreadsheet, I figured out all kinds of possible scales and ended up picking a core set each with its own major and minor interval. Here is what one of the New scales, sounds like same question and the same drill. Number four, pentatonic scale demo. Different type diff, same type, same, not sure, type not sure. Diff, says Fran. Same, says John. This says umbrella. And one more time. All right, thank you guys. And I realize there's a little lag for you to hear it, so I'll just wait another few seconds. All right. So let me rewind a little on the timeline. As I said, I was improvising on my home piano, and in order to write down my ideas, I was using post-it notes and a very awkward notation, writing down each note by hand using letters of the alphabet and numbers from the number line. So I looked online for a music notation tool that did not cost an arm and a leg. I already knew of one that did cost an arm and a leg, and I found an open source free version called Muse Score, which I use to this day. With much trepidation, I relearned how to enter notes on a traditional music staff. Hybridizing, hybridizing gives options. To my joy, I found that MuseScore could play the notes back at me at any tempo or volume I wanted, and that I could have more than one line of music playing at the same time, which was not possible for me on the piano. Furthermore, I could change it from the sound of a piano to a clarinet or an oboe, and I could even add drum. This slide shows a Muse score composition with four parts and sounds. And here's what it sounds like. And the prompt will be, what does the sound feel like? Here we go. Oh, 
Twirly, says Beth. Approaching doom, says John. Mystery, says Dee Dee. Something for a horror movie, Marley says. Yay, Marley, thank you. Confusion, says Beth. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll wait another couple seconds. Make sure it got all the way through. Carnival, says Pirates. So I ended up using my spreadsheets to generate all possible chords for each scale. But you can't play a spreadsheet. So then I made a matching score in MuseScore, which listed all the possible chords for each scale. And I could play those scores just by clicking on them. So now I had a do-it-yourself pick and copy chords from the reference score and paste them into a blank new composition score. And I was off and running. Sharing gives options. One other rewind point. I knew that I wanted to share the music I was creating. And the only thing I knew how to do was use YouTube to share videos. So I checked out options like SoundCloud to share sound audio files. My first ever, what I called Shake Trigram, was posted online. This slide shows that post, and here's part of what it sounds like, and here's the prompt. What does this sound feel like? What does this sound feel like? Jollity, playful. The Shining. Suspense. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hybridizing sharing gives options. So after sharing some of this story with a colleague and also telling them about how I had been following Twitch streamers and admiring their skill and their presence online, my colleague suggested, why don't you stream composing on Twitch? And so I did. This slide shows Twitch composing collections that I've completed so far on the right and corresponding YouTube playlists on the left. I actually began with a traditional scale and song which I called Ballad, but I deliberately used non-traditional chords to tell a story of going from weird to familiar. The metaphor was being in a battle and recovering and growing from the experience. Then I launched full bore into the pentatonic parallel scales. At this time, I had given up trying to fit the five note scales to my six line poems. They just didn't match well, except for my original tunes, which had been composed, it turned out, in traditional Western methods. After several series working my way through my eight different custom scales, I began to experiment with combining them. I used the metaphor of sunlight and shadow, where sun casts cloud shadows on the ground. And if you look at the ground, there are bright areas and shadowed areas. So I ended up making new improvised on the spot parallel scales. Some of them had four notes instead of five, and some had six or three. I also looked at a traditional song called To a Wild Rose and analyzed it and discovered it was using a variation on the traditional seven note Western scale where it had changed two of the notes and I loved it. So I tried composing with it as well. Visualizing gives options. 
Now, let me go back to the issue sharing my music. I ended up deciding I was going to have to use YouTube to share the music, but just showing a blank screen as music plays was as bad as SoundCloud just showing a waveform, I felt. I had a freeware animator that would display the notes in piano roll form, so I made some videos like that. This slide shows one of those piano roll animated compositions and here's what it sounds like and your prompt. What color are the tinkly sounds? Silver, says Marley. Mercury says John. Fran ditto silver. Dee Dee says yellow. One more time. All right. And Beth says, I can't hear sounds pitched that high. Beth, I hear your sister. They are definitely sparkly. So, and Umbrella says gold. Lava red yellow says pirates. Hybridizing, visualizing gives options. The piano roll animator had an option to show notes by color, and this got me looking into creating my own color palette to match pitch classes. This slide shows what I came up with. Here's the prompt. Are the colors on the left the same as the colors on the right? If you see a difference, type diff, same, or not sure. Are the colors on the left the same as the colors on the right? Diff, says D, same, Different order, says John. Not sure, says Pirate. I can't play this slide for you again. So last, last prompt, are the colors on the left same or different? And John says with tints. Thank you. Synchronizing gives options. And then I looked for and found an animator that would let you use and create custom shapes that were driven by and responded to the sound. This was a joy because in MuseScore, I could separate the parts of my music by different lines and export them each as its own musical actor. And then in the visualizer, give each actor its own colored shape and they would dance together or act together on the stage, so to speak. And I could even change the scenes on the stage to transition with the music timeline. This slide shows one of those custom animations and here is part of what it sounds like. Sound eight. What does this sound feel like? Anticipation, says Buffy. Reflective, says Marley. Calm, says Dee Dee. A yawn, says John. And a stretch. <laughs> okay, I'll wait a couple more seconds. Any other responses? Thank you. Play it again. All right, one more time. Meditative says pirates. 
Well, you guys are good. I'll, 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 one more time for Amber. <laughs> All right. Laughter says, oh, thank you, Dee Dee. <laughs> My guys are doing great. So that brings us to the relative present day and the tapping, says Buffy. The relative present day and Umbrella says, detective suspense music. Lovejoy says, the calm before the storm. Brilliant. Where I am today is that I feel that I'm reasonably comfortable and competent with using 12 tones in different custom and traditional scales and taking a set of chords and picking out a pleasant sequence, extracting a melody, adding ornamentation, adding color and shimmer lines and making a visual animation of them. But as usual, we all want more. I wanted to add some kind of 3D expression, and I was able to download some 3D elements from Kitely and add them to my music visualizer, where they can rotate and expand and contract in response to the music. And I've been looking back at Second Life and been amazed by the new custom synchronized choreographed dances and particle light effect shows now scheduled regularly. I've also looked into virtual streaming avatars called VTubers and have one that I use occasionally on my stream for fun. Her head bobs and turns in response to mine from the webcam, and her lips are synchronized to mine, just as Second Life Avatar lips are synced to our own voices. It's a good question, Marley. I'll bring that up at the end, if you don't mind. So there's further to go. Sharing online gives options. While streaming live on Twitch, I noticed it was a different experience from composing offline. At any moment, I felt somebody could be watching my stream, whether they typed something in chat or not. I ended up calling them Silent Lurker because I did find from my after action stream reports that there were people on my stream from time to time. At times, some of the people in chat actually said hello, and at times I had fun dialogues with them. For example, the Austrian music teacher who used MuseScore to customize and print scores for his junior high band, including a star young girl lead trumpet. This slide shows another interactive chat where I got a whole new aha, and I quote, this is a studio experience, but over the internet. Thank you, Beth. What does it feel like chatting online? What does it feel like chatting online? Intimate, says Beth. No such thing as objective observer, says John. Depends on the conversation, says Umbrella. It depends on who I'm chatting with, dittos, Marley. True, ditto, 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 Beth. Ditto, 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 says Buffy. <laughs> Anybody else? What does it feel like chatting? All right, keep moving forward. Keep, and Buffy says, I forget I'm even typing. We did some, hey Val, thanks. Powerful, says Val, Val. I did some collaborative compositions with members of chat. One provided a soundtrack by email and I animated it live with them looking on and sent the recording back to them. 
I also did collaborative compositions with members of the Renderosity digital art community who gave me permission to use screenshots of their work in what were basically animated slideshows using some of my music. I finally realized I could also combine my music with my video machinima work. For example, recordings of presentations given by myself and others in Second Life for university students. This especially highlighted for me the idea of lead actor and accompaniment design in a combined sound and light recording. During the process of composing has been an enriching experience. For example, being able to think out loud and work ideas out into a medium while live and having people with you in the process. Feedback gives options. It became inextricably entangled with composing presentations. I found both are creative endeavors and share a similar process of taking idea from pure thought to trial drafts to more or less completed work, which is then presented. In the earlier stages, I was anxious to not only share what I was doing, but to get feedback. I tried different ways to cajole, evoke, prod, or simply ask for feedback. Some feedback I got was amazing like the piano tuner who said one piece made them think of a huge automated factory floor with hundreds working in synchrony. Some feedback I got was disconcerting. For example, what do you want to know? Why are you asking me? They would say. Some feedback was unsatisfying, like it sounds somber or it sounds like science fiction. Finally, I realized all the feedback was great because didn't I have a wide array of my own response to the creative work of others? This slide shows a composite of my own and another writer's experience of composing and feedback. Uh, my part of the experience sounds like this. Talking to yourself is like this, but talking with cat is like, is like Talking, talking like, like this, this with, with immediate, immediate feedback. feedback. I'll give that again, and here's the prompt. Is it same or different working with someone else present? Talking to yourself is like this, but talking with cat, with cat is like, like talking, talking like, like this, this with, with immediate, immediate feedback. feedback. Different, says John. Different, talking says yourself is like Beth. This, but talking different, with says cat Buffy. Cat is like, like talking, talking like, like this, this with, with immediate, immediate feedback. feedback. Anybody else? What does it feel like when you're working with someone else present? I hear some typing. Different, says DD. All right. Thank you, guys. Probably different, says Ambrella. Different for sure, says Ellie. Okay. So you guys did great on that part. I came to realize that feedback is simply information that helps feed forward to whatever I work on next. Today, I feel that each of us are creators who basically work from some inner impetus that is based half on memory of the past and half on some kind of immediate flash forward insight of what might be possible next. When I said that sharing composing online has been enriching, I include pretty much all areas of my life. For example, seeing all human activity and realms as forms of composition, such as cooking a meal, sewing a textured fabric, compositing a new perfume, writing a school assignment, preparing a business report. Most recently, my attention has been caught adding the dynamic of performing music live to the dynamic of writing it. 
Writing a script and presenting it are two sides of a creative process, I feel. Even presenting extemporaneously creates a memory from which we remember a few good lines that we will repeat the next time we speak on that topic. And I remember with dread the few times I spoke extemporaneously that frankly sucked because I had not taken the time to think ahead and write down a few good lines. So currently, I speculate that having written a few good lines and then repeatedly presenting them with some spontaneity added generates new energy and creates more of that instantaneous flash forward insight of seeing what could be possible next. And so now I'm going to hop down. Doing something live gives options. And for this, I'm going to need five brave volunteers to step forward. John is one of them. I prearranged that, full disclosure. John, if you could come up next to me. And I need four more volunteers that can hear the sounds and respond either in text. There's Marley, come on up, Marley. And uh, there comes, there comes Umbrella, excellent. Two more, I only need two more. I'm gonna pick someone. Let's see, um, Buffy, can I prevail upon you, please, since you're my mentor, and thank you. And I got room for one more. Pirates, why don't you come on up, assuming it's okay with you. I appreciate this. Oh, no, never mind, Lear, Lear came up, I didn't see that. Okay, Pirate, you're saved. You're on, you're saved, Pirates. Okay, so could we have a, a round of applause for our volunteers, please? Say, thank you very much. Oh my God, I bet you can hear that sound now. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, for this part, we're relying on the volunteers, blah, 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 volunteers step forward, yes they did and you acknowledge the volunteers. So John, you're the first volunteer. If you come up and stand next to me, John, on the left-hand side, there are four buttons with letters, A, B, C, D, E. I want you to pick one of those letters and tell me what letter you picked. And other volunteers, you're gonna be doing this in a minute, so pay attention. What button did you, okay, John picks D. Okay, John, I would like you to click button D, click it. Okay, can you hear it okay, John? You can just type, can you hear it okay? Yes. Okay, John, now across the top are five words. Fire, earth, metal, water, wood. So pick one of those words for button D to be matched to, please. And tell me what word you picked. Fire, says John. Okay, we're gonna push that right over there to fire. Okay, so John, you stay there where you are. Okay, Marley, come on up, please. Okay, Marley, there are four buttons left, A, B, C, E. Pick one of those buttons and tell me what button you picked. Marley says B. Okay, Marley, click button B so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, can you hear it okay? Hear it okay? Sounds like the same pitch as John's. Okay, so uh, I'll just play it again. You pick button B. So Marley, you have four words left. Earth, metal, water, or wood. What word do you like button B? Okay, Marley says water. Okay, let me get that over there to water for you. Water, okay, and stand uh, stand underwater. There you go. Okay, um, 
And Barella, if you would come up, pick pick one, whatever's left. Okay. What num uh, What letter did you pick, Umbrella? <laughs> I don't have these sounds. You pick C. Okay, and and you have three elements left. So C. It could be either. And Earth. Earth says, "Okay, good. You guys are keeping up better than I am. Good job." Okay, Lear. Pick one of the last two letters. What do you pick? Tell me. Tell me what it is, and click it. Okay, what what letter did you pick? E. Okay, and now you have two words left, either metal or wood. What would you like E to go to? Metal. All right. Now, Buffy gets the, the most interesting choice of all. Yes, what letter do you pick, Buffy? A or A? <laughs> there you go. And what? Word do you pick? Wood or wood? You, you have to choose. Oh no, you got to choose. Thank you. Thought you were going to get me, did, did you? Okay, now each of you stand under your your word. So Buffy stand under wood. So I remember who's who. So make sure all of you are standing under your uh, your button. Okay, good. Linger, you need to come over here. Yeah, stand under your button. Thank you. Now, I'm going to sit down again because I don't want to block the board. Uh, but this board here has a picture on it for the audience. Now, the performers, if, you know, performers are, are, are uh, sweating right now. They're sweating bullets. They're live on stage. And this is going to be a live performance. So um, here we go. Just take a deep breath, like Marley always says, and sense your body. And here we go. So we got all that handled. Stand under your button. You guys are doing great. So now we're going to perform a composition called called Feng Shui Elements. Yes, 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 Feng Shui Elements. That famous Chinese thing that uh, is a pattern. So on this board, there's a fire at the top symbol for fire. So fire, that's your cue. I'd like to hear fire play just once. Thank you. Now, we know that fire makes ashes, which in Feng Shui are considered earth. So earth, that's your cue. Play earth. Thank you. Now, as we all know, in the earth, there are mines where metal ore is dug up. So metal plays. Very good. Okay, so we're going to start with those three, and they're going to play in sequence fire, earth, metal. So fire is going to start, and one second later, earth, and one other second, metal. Ready, set, fire, take it away. Keep going. Yes. Beautiful. But wait, there's two more elements left. So metal, uh, as we all know, go with me on this. As we all know, uh, water comes from underground reservoirs where the iron uh, mines are. So metal uh, creates water. So let's hear metal, then water, and then wood. Because, of course, uh, wood also stands for plants. So now let's play those in sequence. Metal, water, wood, metal. Water. That was. <laughs> and wood. Pick it up there. And. But wait, there's one more thing in Feng Shui. See, there's also the deconstructive cycle. So wood, wood dams up the earth. So let's hear wood first, wood dams up the earth. Let's hear earth. Wood. 
And then earth dams up the water. So let's hear the water. Yes, very good. And then there's one other uh, deconstructive cycle and that is, oh good, they're gonna, they've taken it away, good. I'll let them do their three thing. <laughs> no problem. The other uh, deconstructive cycle, water puts out fire, which melts metal. So let's hear water, fire, metal, go. Wonderful. And last but not least, harmony of yin and yang. So because Feng Shui is about balance, all of you are to play at once. So let, I'm going to count to three and then all the elements together and you can play yours more than once. Ready, set, go. Right. Please acknowledge our performers. Please acknowledge them. Please acknowledge our performers. And you can take your seats. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is hop back up to my slide, my last slide, and I'll, and I'll answer your questions there too. So here's our last slide, guys. Extro. We had an intro, we have an extro. Composing in the hybrid metaverse. So now we've reached the end of our brief journey into the adventure of composing in the hybrid metaverse. I hope you've enjoyed these shared examples of composing and cross dimensional thinking. But I hope this is an interim, not a final end. I invite you to use ideas we've gleaned today and further flash forward collaborative compositions. And in particular, I ask you, what caught your attention? This concludes the presentation on composing in the hybrid metaverse. Many, many, many thanks.